You know, I gotta do the response to uh, Frank Corey. He uh, he called me out on that last video I put out, and I think he understood what I meant. And I think he called me out on purpose, and I think it was to for me to give me a chance to let people know who I mean. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of people who know me. Haas uh, put out a video as well, and he understood. I mean. If you've been listening to my channel, you've listened to me for a long time, you probably understood what I was saying. Um, but this has to do with uh, the comment that I made in the video yesterday where I said that uh, when you have a, a population of uh, 320 million people, there's no way for one centralized federal government to rule over everyone in a, a fair or equal manner. And in no way at all, none was I trying to say that I believe you have to have a centralized federal government, a centralized government of one sort or another. Um, absolutely the opposite. Uh, those of you who know me, I mean, I'm, you know, libertarian. I'm, uh, you know, this close. <laughs> Doing a lot of research in the sovereign movement. You know, I just my biggest problem with the sovereign movement is I haven't found or seen a legitimate way to actually pull it off without too many of them have been labeled as crazy and dangerous and have been taken down by the government but um, I was it was more of a, a parody of where we are in this nation today where you have the federal government that's in power right now aka Barack Obama running on a platform of fairness to where all these things that he's trying to implement would be fair and equal treatment of everybody you know from anything from health care to um, education to gay rights and that is the absolute problem that we have is that the centralized federal governments even if it was broken into five or six or fifty small countries a strong central government that's not controlled by the local populace, which was where it should be controlled by, that's where the power and authority should reside. What you run into is a situation where as soon as you start trying to accommodate the masses, freedom comes from slavery. Because there's, it's impossible to please everybody at any time just impossible you can never please everybody all the time you can't even please most of the people most of the time so it, it's for a centralized government to think that it can provide an equal and fair manner of dealing with the population is the biggest fallacy I think that's out there and in no way was I supporting centralized government so Corey you were spot-on for calling me out on that um, you know, for me to clarify, give me a chance to clarify. Sometimes when I'm talking, I'm rambling, kind of like right now, and I don't stay focused on the topic, and I'll say things that I guess could easily be taken out of context if you don't know me, if you don't know my channel and what uh, things I stand for. So, you know, kudos to you, uh, right on. I see your uh, Cafe Bustelo late at night was paying off. I'm sorry, it was probably your uh, Mexican Coke. But Haas was right when he was talking about the uh, Articles of Confederation. And, you know, I said, you know, maybe what we need to do is break it up into five or six smaller countries. That might even be five or six smaller confederations of states. Um, some states might, you know, go in together. Some states might even break up. California is a prime example that if I think things went horribly wrong, the state of California would need to break up because the problem with California right now is we have the state is controlled by two population centers the LA LA Basin area and the San Francisco Bay area those two population centers control the state and it's because of the needs of the literally millions of illegals and millions of institutionalized desperate poor people that the rest of us in the state 
must continue to pay and pay and pay. And the only way we're going to change things in California is to break the state up. But that's just, you know, my opinion of what uh, the problems are and the solutions possibly could be for California. Who knows? Who knows what will happen if uh, economic collapse comes here, if the uh, euro is allowed to fail, if Greece is allowed to pull out, even though they're getting propped up by Germany and kind of in hush-hush secret, they're going ahead and just giving them the money because they're afraid that they, they might actually pull out and cause a global problem. But, uh, you know, I think it's needed. I think that uh, you can't reform this. You can't vote. Jess Crit is correct. You can't vote and change things. Uh, we have a varying degree of uh, disagreement or agreement on whether you can affect anything from the local level, but I tend to believe that you can, depending on the local area. In the large cities, no, you can't, you can't change it. Because the progressive liberal design of 80 years ago was to amass the poor into concentrated areas, into the downtowns of cities. You concentrate them into a, a small area, you can concentrate power. And when you concentrate power, corruption takes off. You're able to create the, the means necessary to take control of everything. And we've, we see that in this country. You know, you have more and more people moving into the cities, becoming more urban, more uh, <laughs> worldly, if you will. I mean, you see it in small town America, the differences. When I go uh, see my family up in Northern California, up to the ranch, and go hang out at my aunt's diner in town and listen to people talk, it's just amazing the world of difference. There's so much clarity in uh, the way people think up there, the way they understand their personal freedoms and liberties, and the extremely limited role of government versus when you come down into the city and there's so many people that just think it's the government's responsibility to take care of us. You know, the government has to take care of people. We can't let people go hungry. We can't let people be without, you know, want. So, anyway. Corey, I want to say thank you for uh, calling me out on that. Uh, absolutely no offense taken. Uh, you always uh, have a way of uh, <laughs> putting things out there in a way that people understand and can think about it logically. And you asked about how big does it need to be before I realize what's going on. And to me, it's like, you know, maybe that big. <laughs> I mean, I've known for a long time, a lot of us have, it sucks waking up and realizing what's going on. I think it's a good thing that uh, I think 90% of the population is still asleep, because um, <laughs> I don't think anyone's ready for uh, what's going to come. But uh, anyway, I think I'm getting ready, I think I am ready, I don't know, it's hard to say because you don't know what's going to happen exactly, but I know in my mind I'm prepared for uh, what may come. What may happen so but absolutely to come back around I do not at all believe in uh, a central government to overrule everybody when I talk about going into you know five or six smaller countries or you know 50 countries or more or less depending it has nothing to do with now we need to install somebody up top to rule over us no it needs to be done in the way that was outlined by the founding fathers, the the Federalists, um, or the I'm sorry, the Republicanists, if you will. I don't want to say Republicans because you'll think I'm talking about that crappy old uh, Rhino Party up there. But um, little R Republican, as uh, Andrew Wilkow likes to say. So anyway, that's all I've got. Uh, appreciate it, Corey. Point well taken. Uh, hopefully this clarifies things. SOS out.